Amen. Thank y'all. That was a good week to do that every week. <laughs> well, it's good to see everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, <clears throat> I might just jump on in. It uh, really is. I'm honored to, to be here. Glad you're here. It's good to be in the presence of God this morning. I know this. I'm just already, uh, well, I've all morning, really just sensing the love of God. I'm really feeling his uh, just connection with God this morning. And, and I want to read a scripture. I've just been convicted by this, and it's, it's just been moving my heart. Um, I'm praying that God fills our house, and I believe he is, and I believe that's the people in the room uh, that were the burning ones, that we're the, we're the ones that, that, that burn for Jesus, that we are, we are hungry for him, and we know him. There's a verse here in 1 John. You don't have to go there. This, uh, I'll just read this. It says, by this we know that we abide in him and he is in us because he has given us of his spirit. Amen. You know, you got a spirit and we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. Here's the verse that's been getting me. By this is, is, by this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. I've been thinking about this of... When we get to heaven, every single one of us is going to stand before God. It's a little bit of a sobering. It should be a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing that every single one of us is going to stand before God. And God's not going to ask me, did you have good theology? He's not going to ask me, um, <clears throat> how well did you worship at church on Sunday? He's not going to ask me, um, you know, probably not even going to ask me, like, which I, all these things are good things. You know, quote your best scripture. What he's going to know, what, the, the way, the, where I'm going to have confidence on that day, and even in this day, is do I know him? Like, do I know him? Do I know this Jesus? Like, do I really know, and I even love in the context here, it's talking about the love of God. Like, do I really, do, do I have such a connection with God that when the day of judgment comes and I'm standing before him, and what I love about this is it talks about love and there's no punishment in love and love casts out fear, but what, what's going to matter for every one of us as we stand before him and when we do stand before him, having confidence that do I know this Jesus? Do I have a relationship with him? So Jesus, we, we want to know you. Jesus, we know you. God, we know you. God, I want to, that, that's what, everything flows out of that. Everything in my life flows from knowing this man named Jesus. Everything in life matters. What matters most in my life is, is am I a laid down lover of this Jesus? And do I know him in my life? That's what's going to matter, and that's what's going to give us confidence on that day is that I know Jesus and that I, I have a relationship with him and that I am hungry for him. And my prayer for us today is that, we would, that, that a fire even more would get lit in us to know this Jesus that's so in love with us. This God loves us so much. Jesus loves us so much. He loves us so much. You know, his love is not in question. His love was demonstrated on the cross. His love was demonstrated um, in the way that he stepped off of his throne and he came to this earth because he had you in his mind, because he loved you so much that he gave his life for you. And if that really is true, if that's who God is, then every single one of us should lay our life down and follow him the rest of our life. We should give our life to be lovers of this Jesus that so loved us. I'm going to talk a little bit about this today. 
Um, <clears throat> but something that I noticed in the, in the scripture is, uh, is that Jesus didn't turn away desperation. And he didn't tame passion. He didn't turn away desperation. And he didn't tame passion. I want to talk about being fully alive today. Last week we talked about being dead to sin. I actually highly encourage you to go listen to that because I think there is something really powerful about understanding how Jesus killed us. <laughs> that we're the grateful dead. That we, are, that we are actually dead and that there is something really powerful about understanding that, that the old man has died. And Paul says to consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God. That he actually tells us to be alive to God. And so my, my heart, my question for you and me to, this morning is... Is am I alive to God? Like, am I really alive? Like, yes, I've died, but I've also been resurrected with him. It even says that we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Somehow right now, you're seated in heaven and you're seated in this chair. Like, we're seated in heaven and we're seated in this chair right now. That we have the, the spirit that when we believe in God, the spirit of life comes and lives inside of us. This life comes and burns inside of us. So guess what? You're alive. Like you are alive in Christ. You're not dead. You're actually alive. And uh, I love the, I'll read a little definition of alive because I looked it up in the Greek. And it says alive is to live, is to breathe, is to be among the living. Not lifeless, not dead. To enjoy real life. To have true life. Active, blessed, endless in the kingdom of God. Living water, having vital power in itself and exerting the same upon the soul. To be fresh, strong, efficient, active, and powerful. This is what it means, the definition to be alive. You and me are alive in God. We are alive in him. We're dead to, to sin and we're alive in God. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, Jesus, this is one thing that I think is so beautiful about walking with God is that he speaks to the very center of who we are, to our very core. He speaks to that. There's a, a verse where he says, and, and I'll read this for you on John 7, 37 through 38. It says, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, you just imagine Jesus in a loud voice screaming this out. Let anyone who is, wants good theology, anyone that wants good behavior, anyone that wants a self-improvement plan, he says, anyone that is thirsty, come to me and drink. And guess what? Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water. That word actually, it's, it means flood of living water will flow from within them. This is not a dead person. This is somebody that is alive. Like you want rivers of living water. I love the way that Jesus speaks to the very core of who we are. He speaks to the very core longings, the core desires that we have. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. See, Jesus awakens true passion and desire in us. We can be fully alive in him, fully alive in Christ. Um, <clears throat> I said this, but Jesus doesn't turn away the desperate or tame the passionate. You ever notice that in scripture? You ever see some of these stories? I think they're so fascinating. But oftentimes the crowd would actually tell somebody to be quiet. The crowd would say, you know what? You're being a little bit too loud. There was a man that was blind and, and he cried out as Jesus was walking by. And he said, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. And what was fascinating is, is that the crowd began to tell him to be quiet. But Jesus didn't stop him. Jesus actually went to this man that was desperate. Can you imagine being in a room and then all of a sudden hearing, like maybe you hear like a chainsaw in our day, like cutting through the roof. You just imagine like the, the room is so packed and there's so many people in here and Jesus is in the middle of his message and he's going great. And then all of a sudden you hear people climbing on the roof and, and all of a sudden you start to hear some saws coming through the, through the roof and here comes a, a lame man being lowered down into the middle of the room. I mean, you could think like people would probably be like, hey, you need to get off the roof, you know. 
I mean, I think about the, the woman with the, the issue of blood and how she just fought through the crowd and how she fought through and, and, and the crowd is there and just pushing through the crowd to just touch the hem of his garment. And what happens? This lady gets completely healed of this issue of blood. I want <clears throat> to, there's a, a story in the Bible and, and I'll get you to go there. If you've got your Bible, you can go to uh, John chapter seven. I'll give a little bit of the context of this, but it's, it's verse, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read in verse 40, but I'll give you a little bit of the context of this. Um, <clears throat> Jesus is having dinner with a Pharisee. So this would have been a coat and tie dinner. Probably, I don't know if they'd have been coat and tie, but it would have been, this would have been a, you know, Jesus is reclining at the table and he's with a Pharisee. You know, this is a religious leader of the day. His name is Simon. And there's this, this woman that comes, and you, you may have heard this story, but she comes with the alabaster jar. And, and everybody knows, and if you can read this, the, the, the Bible calls her a sinful woman. It doesn't take long to figure out what her sin is, that this is probably a prostitute, that this is somebody that um, everybody knows in the town is, is, a, is a sinner, is, is how they, they describe her. And, and think about this. You're in a meeting and you're there and you're eating dinner. And this woman who's, who's, who's known around town is sitting behind Jesus and she's, she's weeping. She's just weeping. And, 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 all the, and she starts to take her hair and wash Jesus' feet with her hair. Or begins to rub her feet with, rub her hair on Jesus' feet. And not only that, it says that she begins to kiss his feet. Like this, I would imagine that this would have felt inappropriate. That if we would have been in the meeting, I guarantee you that we probably would have been thinking like, hey, I don't know, I think this is a little too much. <laughs> the, even even the, the, the Pharisee has the thought of, if Jesus knew who this woman was, he wouldn't be letting her do this. If he knew who this was, if a prophet, and he's even kind of going after him, if a prophet would know that this is a woman of sin, and if you read this in another translation, it actually says that the people began to harshly rebuke her. But Jesus said that this woman has done something beautiful to me. I mean, just imagine the setting here. You're sitting in this room and you're there with you know, religious leaders. You're there with leaders. And there's this woman that everybody knows in town. And she's, she's weeping. And she starts to take her hair and starts to kiss Jesus' feet. Like even just the, the picture of that would have just felt inappropriate. And, and, and Simon, the guy's house that he's in, so we're going to read this Luke chapter 7 verse 40. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. <laughs> I just, I love Jesus. He said, hey, I got, I got something I need to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money. So two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. So one owed five and one owed 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. I think that's really important. He forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he, turned, <clears throat> then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you how many sins have been forgiven. Therefore, I tell you her sins, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace fascinating story. You know, this is the, the way that I see this is that Jesus tells this, this beautiful story to Simon. And I think, I think what Jesus is going after, I don't think Jesus is telling Simon, you don't love me enough. 
I don't think that's what he's saying. What's fascinating is, is that, I mean, if you can tell the picture here, Simon is the one that has, you know, five denarii, and the woman is the one that has 50. And it actually says that Jesus forgave them both, that he had forgiven both of them, that just as much Simon had been forgiven in a sense, like obviously his sins weren't as many, if you will, but he had been forgiven as well, just as, as much as she had been forgiven. And I think what Jesus was going after, he wasn't going after, hey, Simon, you don't love me enough. What he was going after was the self-righteousness that was in Simon. Can you catch this? That Simon was judging somebody's passion. Simon was judging somebody's relationship that they had with Jesus. And Jesus was saying, hey, Simon, both of you have been forgiven. You've actually both been forgiven. Like, yes, the reason that she has this passion and this love for me is because she, in all of this sin, see, she can see her sin. It's evident. And she sees this. And out of her, that, out of feeling the freedom and the love that Jesus is showing to her, that she, out of that, loves him. <clears throat> I remember when we, uh, we did Seek First. And... I, uh, when we had Seek First here, uh, y'all remember Stephanie Gretzinger when she came? You know, if you were looking for a, a sermon or a teaching, you didn't get that. If I was looking for, for, for a message, the, the truth is, is that she actually was the message. That when she came here, she, she sat on this, this stage, and really, it was about a 30-minute weeping session. <laughs> She just sat here and just weeped before the Lord. She obviously taught and did some stuff as well. And we had some awesome, awesome time together. Um, <clears throat> but it was a, a demonstration of somebody that is so in love with Jesus. It was somebody that was, and, and, and here's what we have to check in our heart is, is, am I Simon? And I start to judge somebody else's relationship and their passion and their hunger and their desperation that they have for God. Because Jesus was sitting here saying like, hey, Simon, I love you and I've actually forgiven you too. I actually love you. I'm not against you. But I do want to check that thing in your heart that might be judging her because of her passion and her love for Jesus. And I love that Jesus gives permission to this. And I'll just say this. I, I think this is, to me, this is the presence of God. This is the real thing. This is where I'm like, it's not just a book that I'm reading, but it's a passion that burns inside of my heart for him. It's where it's, it's more than, than just living good and having good theology and good behavior in my life. It's a passion for this man named Jesus that burns so deep in my bones that I'm willing to do anything for him, that I'm willing to look like a fool in the middle of an, a meeting because I'm so hungry for him. I'm so desperate for this Jesus because I see that he has forgiven me in my life. And I see the love and the passion that Jesus had for me. Man, when I think about the cross and what he went through but for us, for me, like I think every one of us, it's like, Jesus, what you've done for us is beyond anything that we can really think or imagine. And just to lay down our lives. And so there's something about Jesus that gave, gave permission for people to be passionately in love with him. And he didn't judge them. And he said, hey, this person right here loves me so much because they see how much they've been forgiven. They see, Simon, I love you too, man. I do. <laughs> but it's like you need to work that little self-righteousness thing out of you and recognize that this person loves me and has done something good to me. Come on. I remember, I just remember this in my own heart, man. I remember when I was sitting in the fraternity house, I've shared this many times, but I remember being at the end of my road, being at that place where you felt like you were at the bottom of the, of the, of the barrel in a sense. And I remember just coming out of this lifestyle of addiction and so much stuff. And I remember yielding myself to God and I felt like God just gave me this hunger for him. And I just burned for him. I wanted, I just, I wanted the, the I didn't want to just read the Bible. And I remember just reading the scriptures and seeing things that Jesus did and saw the signs and the wonders and the miracles and being free from sin and alive to God. And there was just this passion and hunger that was inside of me. And, and I feel like, I just feel that for us today, that God's stirring up our passion and hunger. God's just stirring that up in us. 
that we can be people of passion, that we can be people of hunger. I also just remember different seasons of my life where uh, I'd been doing ministry for so long and I'd, I'd, it had become about what I was doing instead of about a person. It became about serving. It became so much about trying to do the right thing and live the right way that I got my eyes off of the prize. I got my eyes off of this man named Jesus, and I got my eyes off of him. But I remember in those seasons turning my heart back to him and saying, God, I love you, and I want you, and you're the reason why I'm doing this, and I want to know you. And walking that way, <clears throat> you know, there's some traits to people that are passionate. I want to read some of these. These are some traits that I think people that are, that are fully alive and hungry, people that are, that are hungry, they obey because they love. Isn't that, isn't that good? If you love me, keep my commandments. The reason that I, I the reason we, we obey is because we love this person named Jesus. And I, and I feel like even in our own hearts, if obedience has gotten difficult, or I feel like I'm striving or in a grind, or do I do do I even really love God anymore? Do I even really want to, you know, like if, if I've if if I'm in that space somewhere I got out of relationship with him. Somewhere I got outside of just me and Jesus and being a laid down lover of him. And I'll say this, and I believe it's true that lovers will get so much more done than workers. I really believe that. I believe people that really love God, that really have a passion and a hunger for him, you're going to get so much more done yielded to him and walking with him and burning for him. So we obey. You're hungry. People that are alive, we obey because they love. Fully alive, hungry, passionate people are willing to, to look foolish. <laughs> Every person that I know that's just got that burning in their bones, it's like this, this woman. And I think at the same time too, I don't, I'm, I'm not judging that, that I'm not judging somebody else's relationship, that I think that's the thing that Jesus was going after. Hungry and passionate people are focused on God and his priorities. Come on. They're focused on God and his priorities. They're not easily distracted from God and their mission. Come on, people that are hungry and passionate are not easily distracted from God and their mission. Hungry and passionate people do not have another plan ready if God doesn't do what they are expecting him to do. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't, there's not a plan B. It's like, it's plan A, Jesus, and that's it. It's all I got. Just, just Jesus, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm yielding to him, and we'll trust him. Hungry and, and passionate people are willing to sacrifice and pay any price. You know, I think that's another, another thing about when I'm hungry. I, I see sacrifice and I see paying a price. It's a blessing. I, I, it's like there's something about that that's, that it shows that it costs me. It shows that it, that it means something to me because I'm willing to pay a price for it. I'm, I'm, I mean, that, that's, I think that's one of the main revelations of the cross is you see how much God values us because he was willing to pay the highest price possible for you and me. So it means that, it, that you mean something to him, <laughs> that you actually mean everything to him because he was willing to pay the price for us. Hungry and passionate pe people choose to seek God desperately. Come on. <clears throat> I want to encourage us as a community just to cultivate hunger in our lives. <clears throat> if, uh, if you don't feel hungry, and I admit there's been seasons in my life where I felt hungry and seasons in my life where I didn't feel hungry, um, it is something that we can cultivate. It is something I've found in my life that if I get around him, and sometimes I have to, my, my priorities have gotten off. My focus has gotten off. I've, I've allowed my heart to get caught up into things. Maybe they're even good things, but it's not the one thing. I've, I've lost the one thing. And that was one of the things, if you, you look at Martha and Mary, <clears throat> what Jesus said about Martha, <clears throat> if you know the story of Martha and Mary, Jesus goes to their house and <clears throat> Martha's there and, and she's serving. And she's doing all the uh, serving and serving's a good thing, but she's over there serving. And, and Mary is just sitting at the feet of Jesus, just listening to Jesus. It says that she's sitting there just listening to him. And 
um, Jesus or Martha, you know, comes to Jesus and she's upset because she's been serving and she's like, you know, she's focused on Martha, on Mary, and like, shouldn't Mary be serving with me? And Jesus was like, she's found the one thing. And it says, and it uses that language that she, she's found the one thing. And there's something about that one thing that David talked about in the Psalms, that it's the one thing that I desire. And there's something about that being the core of my heart of like, God, you're the one thing that I want. And there's something when that, when, when, when that is there and I'm cultivating that in my life, I, I personally think it's almost impossible not to be hungry for God in that. And I think that if I'm not hungry, the best thing that I can do is I can go feast on the Lord. And, if, and I think in the kingdom, it works backwards, that when I eat, the more hungry I get. That like the more I eat of him, the more I cultivate his presence and that in my life. And sometimes it does mean that I need to shut things off so that I can get refocused on him and just put my heart and my focus on him. If I do that, there's going to be a passion and hunger that comes out of that. <clears throat> <clears throat> We're just called to live differently. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we love you. God, we love you, God. <clears throat> and Lord, I pray, I pray for a passion to fill our hearts for you, for the one thing. God, I, I pray that that would, that would authentically come out of our hearts. You know, I believe that about David. I believe David had such a powerful relationship with God that he knew God so closely that he said, taste and see that the Lord is good. That wasn't a, a prophecy. That wasn't a, hey, I'm, 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 I'm speaking this. He's actually speaking this from a place of, I've been with God. I've been at his table and I know that God is good. I can, I've tasted him. I've seen him. I've experienced him in my own life. And the fruit of that is that God in his presence is the fullness of joy. In his presence is, is pleasures forevermore. And so, Lord, I, I just thank you that, God, we're a house of your presence, that we're a people of your presence. That, God, we long and we know you, Father. Yeah, I feel, <clears throat> I just kind of feel in the room that, um, you know, sometimes re what religion will tell us is that God is here and I'm over there, and that that <clears throat> that I'm <clears throat> that I'm over here, and I've got to work to God. I've got to work over here. But the truth is, is that God <clears throat> in Christ, He's already with me, and that He's with me right now. You know what? God's in this room right now. You know, He's pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. You know, God is actually closer to us than our own breath. And so, Lord, I just thank you that you're in this room right now. <clears throat> thank you, Father. I'm going to have uh, our team come back up. <clears throat> I'm just going to give us a little bit of space. Is what I've just kind of felt on my heart. We've been doing this discipleship service or discipleship <laughs> series. And a disciple is somebody that's with Jesus, that becomes like Jesus and does as Jesus did. And <clears throat> if I'm going to become alive, then I have to know that he's with me, that his presence is with me. And I think one of the character traits of Jesus is that we're passionate, we're hungry for him. And when I look at the scriptures and I see Jesus, I see this man that didn't turn away desperation and he didn't tame hunger and that he gave people the, the place to be hungry for him. And I think that looks different for everybody. I don't think it has to always look one way. I, I, again, I don't think I don't think that Jesus was, was mad at what Simon's relationship with him looked like. <clears throat> I think he was just saying, hey, don't have judgment on her. Don't have judgment on somebody that sees how much they've been forgiven and how loved they are. 
And I also think that God wants to wake up passion in us. That Jesus says, come to me, all you who are thirsty, all you that are searching. And I even think in the room, I guarantee, <clears throat> I guarantee you that there's people in the room that are searching. Sometimes we're, we're searching the internet. Sometimes we're, we're, we're searching in our job. We're searching for success. We're, there's so many different things that, that are trying to meet the core longing of our heart just to know God. And the truth is, is that you're never going to be truly satisfied unless you know and meet this King Jesus. <clears throat> and so, if you can, can you stand with me? And I, I want to, <clears throat> I just want to open up our sanctuary. It's already open. <laughs> but I just want to give us a little bit of time here just to pour out our hearts to God. And the, the front is open, that if you have any anything in your heart, any way that you want to respond this morning, I, I want the, the, the altar, the front is open. But I just want to give us some space just to know this Jesus and just to pour out our heart to him. And I want to just give us permission as well that whatever that looks like this morning. And so Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we want to know perfect love. Yeah, I just feel like God's opening up his heart to people right now. I know his heart's always open, but I just feel like even in your own self right now that God's just opening up his heart. God, I pray right now that we would know the love of God we would see what you have done for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Jesus, you're the one that we want, Jesus. Jesus, you're it, Father. You're the lover of our soul, God. God, you're the one that we want, Jesus. You're the one that died for us and gave your life for us. You're the one that gave it all for us, God. God, we want to know that love, the perfect love, God, that we may have confidence, Father, even in the moment right now, Father. <clears throat> Lord, where we felt heavy and weary, God, where we've gotten off path, Father. Lord, we want you, God. You're the desire of our heart. You're the desire, Father. You're the thing. You're the thing that we long for. The one thing, God. The beauty of your presence. Lord, your presence is wonderful. God, there is the fullness of joy in you. Jesus, you are the reason that we're here this morning, God. You're the reason, God. We're here because we love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. Ooh, Lord, show us what it looks like, God, to be a laid down lover, Father. Lord, we declare that we're the burning ones, God, that we are alive in you, Father. You have set us free from sin and death and shame and condemnation, God. And we have life in you, everlasting life in you, God. Ooh, thank you, Father. Yeah, come more, Father. Jesus, we love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, God. Father, I thank you that you're breaking off shame right now, Father. You're breaking down the walls in us, Father. You're breaking down the judgments that are in us, God. God, you're breaking down the self-righteousness that's in us, God. Father, you're releasing a freedom like we've never seen in our lives, Father. Lord, we declare the freedom of the Lord in the room, Father. Lord, I thank you for your freedom, Father. I thank you, God, that we can be the freest people on the planet, Father, because of what you've done for us, Father. Thank you, Father. Whew, thank you, Father. 
Oh, there's so much more of your presence, God, that we've never touched, that we've never seen, Father. Lord, we pray for more of you, God. Lord, I pray that your fiery presence would enter this place like never before, Father. Lord, I thank you that you baptize us in the Holy Spirit and fire, Father. Lord, I pray that there would be a fire in our bones, God. Lord, I pray that there would be a fire in our bones, God. Lord, I pray that there would be something inside of us so strong that we've never experienced before, Father. Lord, that our hearts would be alive, God. Lord, that rivers of living water would flow out of us, God. Father, that we wouldn't just be cute people, but Father, we'd be burning, passionate, hungry people for you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Father. Lord, what you did for us was a big deal. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.